Hello, hello, the Digital Loop Season 3, Episode 12. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul, great to see you. Great to see that you're back from the beautiful lands of Montenegro. Oh, yeah, how that was, was really amazing, honestly. I know you've been there uh, uh, last year to that same event I was at, which is called uh, Spark.May. Uh, so I was supposed to be there with you last year and I had to cancel and I promised the organizer that I would be there this year. So I couldn't stay for the entire thing, but now I regret it because it was not only it was an amazing conference, and we'll get to that because it's a bit of the topic of the day, but it was also it's a, such a beautiful country. So I, I, I miss it already and I'll, I'll probably get back. Did you like it when you were there last year? Oh man, I love it. I remember when you posted some some photos of the view of the hotel i was like man i was there last year and i love it yeah it's fantastic event the the team uh, uh responsible for doing our good friend vladimir uh, and uh, giovanna and all the team um <coughs> sorry they have done a fantastic 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 job and uh, they have managed to do a really really top 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 level quality uh, of event in a small little tiny place in Montenegro and, and it was a big surprise and yeah, uh, and, and we realized that this this will be a good a good opportunity to talk a little bit about about your experience there and maybe talk a little bit more experience there last year and and look at how you know uh, small events like this could really have an impact in their in their local ecosystems yeah, I was surprised. I, I'm going to admit it publicly that I, I, I was uh, uh, almost clueless about, I mean, I knew where the country was and knew its origin and history, but I had absolutely no clue of, of its size. I, I mean, of its geographical size, yes, but of its population size, I had no clue. It's only 650,000 people, so it's actually relatively small. Uh, I kind of figured that out when I landed at the capital airport. I was like, mm. in emerging countries, obviously, you don't have that many conferences, which means that usually conferences tend to uh, do to conflate a lot of different topics together when we talk about either technology, innovation, startups. So it was a bit like this. But what I really found interesting is that they, they found not only high quality speakers, and I'm not only talking about myself, sorry, I'm not a high quality speaker. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not here to judge myself. But they, the, 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 the diversity of topics was interesting. It was not only, it was beyond, you know, the usual innovation technology. It was about creativity, it was about the societal changes. It was about scaling even Montenegro, the country and its culture. So that's, I found it very fascinating that they, they were able to, to create such, such a great uh, uh, program uh, at the same time, you know, obviously such a great venue. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a little place uh, uh, on the coast, on the coastline, which is absolutely stunning. So to, I mean, we had the, the first speaker we, this year, we, we had him as a guest because it was no, no one else than Ramon, Ramon de Leon. Uh, I think you've seen the, the speech because everything was uh, broadcasted uh, live on the, uh, on the web. What do you think? Uh, Ramon, Ramon, he, he, he rocks and uh, he, he's a fantastic speaker. And what I love about Ramon is that he manages to, he's a fantastic storyteller that really makes his points uh, really tangible. Uh, he doesn't talk about theory. He doesn't talk about concepts and ideas, but he said what he did back then. And when I, I put the video and I talked to the guy and this is what happens and he really, really makes you feel like you're really living the story that he's talk, talking about. Um, his ideas are fantastic. And, 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 and some of the stuff when you watch it, you're like, seriously, do you just, you know, took a pizza in the middle of the winter, to give a pizza to this police uh, just because he tweeted that he was hungry and stuff like this. Fantastic, fantastic. I mean, the message that he gave, I, I thought was very valuable. I think that his experience and his 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 way of, of doing business are really, really, really uh, uh, important for, for people like, you know, for a small emerging market to, 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 to get it. Because his approach is really, really, you know, a hustler that works hard, uh, it's very creative, tries, uh, tries new things, thinks outside the box, and, and because of that, he's, he, he has been very, very successful. And I think that this is the type of message that, that, that uh, inside of the world uh, uh, entrepreneurs need to get. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he obviously has a personality. He's very outgoing, very, I was about to say loud, but I know that in English, loud, I was thinking of that in French is a bit is a bit negative, but really that very highly engaging personality. But it's true that he was, in some senses, he was, he was a pioneer if actually in, in, in developing all that customer relationship with the use of social media and the one-to-one, -one, the peer-to-peer -peer customer relationships. And he was able to scale that. At a, at a level in Chicago with his Domino's uh, Pizza franchise. And 
I mean, these stories, you know, even though some of them are now a uh, date from a few years back, are actually extremely relevant because you, we can still see how brands, small and big, are struggling to actually, you know, have these one-to-one -one conversations with with uh, with with the, the customers. And I know it's more complicated than that. I mean, we've been talking about this over and over in many many episodes, but I believe that. The, the almost life lessons that he gives are very valuable to understand that you have to boil it down to this kind of personal experience, personal relationship that he's, he's able to build. So, uh, I mean, I'll encourage you to, to watch, obviously, the, his talk on the, uh, on the, the, all the videos will be live on the smart.me channel. I'll put the links uh, on, the, um, on the blog post uh, linked to this episode, but also to uh, listen to our episode with him we had, I think it was last season, if I remember well, uh, it was live from Chicago. That was a very nice episode because it's still valid uh, for those act uh, at least who are in sales and or marketing uh, and communications. I think it's the lessons that he gives are, are still valid. Then it was me. I'm not going to talk about myself uh, uh, because I hate talking about myself in the third person. I gave my usual talk about the innovation and, and distributed power. Uh, it's one I've been giving for eight months. Actually, probably the last time I'm giving to it because I've, I've started building a new one. I, I'm going to put as well the link if anyone is interested to, to to look at me after just having looked at me now in this show. Uh, uh, but then what was interesting is there was, and I'm not going uh, on purpose, not going in the order of the agenda. There was the, the founder of the Pirate Bay. I mean, you know what the Pirate Bay is, uh, I guess, um, Ivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we <laughs> met him in the previous event, yeah. So, you know, the Pirate Bay, for those who don't know, is one of the biggest file sharing sites in the world. I mean, it's not file sharing directly. It was a directory to being able to find free files. Of course, it was very, very controversial. I mean, it still is very controversial because it allows you to, to download from software to movies to music uh, without any, you know, uh, rights. So basically, it infringes on everything, you know, every single copyright. His talk was obviously extremely fun uh, because it is a, he has a very fun uh, personality. His name is P Peter Sunday um, Kolmisopi. He's, he's a Finn who lives in a farm in, in, in Sweden. Uh, he has crazy stories, obviously. He's been to jail, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one of the things that it was very interesting is he almost challenged me uh, in a way because I'm the kind of guy who is a uh, sometimes too optimistic and I talk about how you know the the, the, the revolution of everybody being a node on the network how how this can actually improve our lives improve the way we see power and we distribute uh, our knowledge and uh, and and efficiency he kind of countered that in a way and saying for him but he admitted being a pessimistic so that's why it's interesting that probably the fact that we are a we really are entering this phase where technology and, and innovation is, is going at an extremely rapid pace. The fact that the networks are being so big, and obviously by that he, he thinks about, namely Google, uh, Facebook, and a few others, they kind of own the infrastructure. And basically for him, it should be, the open web should be the, where it all happens and not on private webs. I mean, this is a discussion we're not gonna have now, but I, I think it means quick picture debate about, we know it's going. We're going faster and faster, and we're about to enter an era with every month. And I'm not kidding. Every single month, the amount of innovation invented in a month will be bigger than the entire history of innovation of all time. So when you think about that kind of speed, you obviously think that if some brand, some sorry, some networks are so big today that everything happens on them, they cannot gain a, almost a monopolistic uh, mar uh, market. I don't know if you've seen that that talk or not, but if you haven't, uh, Ivan, I'm I, 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 I didn't have the opportunity to watch it. Now, definitely, I'm going to check it out. But it's really interesting what you're saying. It really makes me think about you know, the, what is your personal approach towards all these things that are happening. And, and it's very interesting because you and me, we share the same very optimistic uh, way of looking at things. Like when we look at all this, I mean, I even said in all my, all my presentations, this is represents a huge opportunity. Um, but the, the moment that you're saying it right now, it's 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 you know there is the the, the other side of the of the of the of the coin, right? That right. If 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 it's an opportunity, if you look at it from a different perspective, if you look at it from the point of view of of a pessimistic approach. It actually is really scary, uh, no, it and, is. and it's really I, it interesting is. to think about that. No, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's absolutely. I mean, we should have one one day an episode just dedicated about that because it's true that you and me have this tendency 
to talk about you know the business side of things. I mean, we sometimes mention uh, society. I do mention a lot society when I do my talks, but it's true maybe because of, again, I'm an optimistic, maybe also because of a matter of time. If you talk for 20 minutes, there's only so much you can put. I you know, hint at you know the safety issues, of course, from cybersecurity to the societal changes. But it, it's certain that there is probably maybe a price to pay of having a few networks that are so big now and that might maybe concentrate even more power as we uh, as we move on. I don't know. It's it's something we should we should address in a in a in a single maybe episode you and me at some point. But it's uh, uh because it, it it is a question that we might not think about at all times because it's not every day in front of us. But I think it is obviously a society question, and and there are recently been a lot of of very high level conferences where these type of topics are uh, more and more discussed. I mean, we talked briefly also in past episodes about the rise of artificial intelligence, the rise of robots in a way, uh, and automation, and all that relies on data, which you and me and, you know, we provide the data back to the network, and that creates a whole uh, the whole debate about privacy, well, what are the limits of innovation, uh, uh, innovation versus ethics, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it is fascinating. Not that he talked about all that in his talk, but I think that it's a very a good counterbalance and it's very fun. I mean, honestly, although, the, again, he's been to, to jail and, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, and he's still very controversial to many people. Actually, there was one sponsor uh, that was not named that pulled out of spark.me just knowing that he was speaking because they said he's you know uh he's uh, he's pro anti uh, sorry he's anti-copyright so we don't want to be part of it so he's still very controversial he cannot travel to the us for instance i, I sat down with him many times it was a fascinating guy to talk to uh, then there was one uh, then i'm not going in the right order but there was uh, another greek actually <laughs> that i met for the first time uh, he moved to the to the Silicon Valley about I think it was eight nine years ago. Uh, he has a CRM platform startup, but I love the title of his talk, which is which was how uh, the Silicon Valley made me think small, and it's very counterintuitive because you and me again and others when you talk about the Silicon Valley, you think about these moonshots, these huge things that happen and that change the world. Did you? I mean, did you like the talk? Because it was one of the most entertaining, right? <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, I've seen him before on stage. He was at Pioneers, I guess, last year, and and I know right. that Steli, because we're talking about Steli, he's yeah, Steli he's legendary. To. He's legendary when it comes down to the point of selling. Uh, right. He's well known as the expert in sales, and uh, I've listened to some of his his uh, interviews in different podcasts, uh, and 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 I find that he, I really find his 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 attitude and his approach very very. Very interesting. Um, his talk was great. I mean, basically, he he, he gave all this story about how he moved from from uh, uh, where where he was in Germany, I guess. He yeah, Germany. Germany to, yeah, to yeah, exactly. Valley. He was living in Germany. Yeah. He he moved to Silicon Valley. He didn't even know what Silicon Valley stands for, but he went there. Yeah, he, actually, sorry, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt, interrupt you there because. So imagine he takes a one a, a one a, a one way ticket and he goes to he arrives at San Francisco airport goes into a cab basically asks I want to go to Silicon Valley and if you've ever been there you know that Silicon Valley is not like a location or something so the cab driver looked at me and said look at him and say what the hell is he talking about so that shows and he's improved obviously since then he created this whole and he tells that because he's very humble about all this and he created he created this whole not only persona but the successful businesses around it, it's, it's fascinating. Sorry I interrupted you because I love that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a fantastic story and, and it shows a lot about the characteristic of this guy, that, you know, somebody that took a one-way ticket to go to make it in the States. Of course, his approach was to make it big, to make it huge, to be, he even mentioned that his goal was to be Times Person of the Year. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then when he arrived, you know, his approach was like, okay, we're gonna revolutionize education and we're gonna do huge things. And, and and little by little, I, we highly recommend you to check out his, his presentation. He realized that it's not about, you know, the big, 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 super huge objectives, but it's actually about making the little steps one by one that actually are going to get you where you want to accomplish. And basically what he's doing now, his company is not, you know, an, a, a huge idea, but it's actually having a very, a lot of impact on, on different on different companies. And it's very, 
it, it, it is doing great and it's a fantastic organization and, and the product is really good. And as a result, he is very successful. And, and I think it, it, it was really, really, really cool insight about you know thinking small and just looking at all the things that you need to get done in order to build a, a, a valuable business. Not only successful, but a valuable business that actually is adding value to others and actually having impact you know, little by little, in a smaller, in a smaller approach than just trying to be, you know, this huge force of nature that is going to change everything. Yeah, I mean, this is something also I mentioned in in the talk I've given, but I mean that you mentioned as well is breaking breaking point breaking down the journey. I mean, like solving a single point of the journey. This is. The fact that we have suddenly access to, of course, all the technology, but also cheap technology allows suddenly it awakes points that you, we couldn't even touch. We couldn't solve these little these little pain points about our journey. When I say journey, do not only think customer journey, our life journey, and suddenly it's possible. That's what he meant. You can actually go surgically and say, okay, this is the single point of entry, and I'm going to solve that, and that will help solve a bigger issue and not do it the opposite where you're like, I'm going to solve education. And then, then what, right? You know, solve education means a lot of things. And then you just write books about it, but you cannot actually solve it. So, uh, it, it it's a fascinating talk. He's very fun on stage. He actually uh, even cursed a few words in Greek, which made me <laughs> laugh. He blames me for that, obviously. Uh, so that was very fun. A few others I've quickly mentioned. Uh, there was one, uh, Christopher F Fabian. So. That was a very interesting one. He was a closing keynote of, the, of day one, uh, which is the day I, I attended. So he works at UNICEF. UNICEF is uh, this program, uh, it's this body of the United Nations of the UN that uh, caters for children around the world. And uh, the, the fascinating which, part which, is, which, sorry, go ahead, yeah. I was going to wish, by the way, my wife used to used to run the UNICEF in Poland for many, many years. So I'm just giving a little, little, so there's a connection there, yeah. So he's a, hey, yeah. So he's a, he's a, I think he's a head, of, I'm not sure exactly about his title, you can check it out, kind of a head of innovation for UNICEF. And he's, so he used to be in the private sector, so startups, and moved on to UNICEF and applies similar techniques and similar uh, uh, psyche that you find in startups to solve small problems in, in, in obviously the developing world and more often than not, in countries that have been hit by disasters, you mentioned Nepal, that we all heard had a big earthquake uh, in, in the past month. Uh, he mentions his, his experiences in Africa and how basically they were trying to build uh, simple tools. Often, some 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 are just messaging tools. I say just that doesn't minimize the effort. Messaging tools, but that cater to a specific need in either a time of crisis. Or a time of need, it, it 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 was extremely fascinating to listen to him because you can see that beyond the usual, you know, uh, let's do another Instagram. I, I know I always say that example because it's the easiest one, but there are problems that can be solved in other ways that are maybe not going to do money, but it can help the world and actually help also these these countries in a time of crisis, but maybe later on as well to kind of rise and become not only developing, but emerging countries. I mean, it's a fascinating, uh, it's a fascinating person and it's a fascinating talk and a very like, they, they don't have much means, you know, whether even even if it's the UN, it's not as if they're, you know, they're funded like Google or something. So it's it's really cool to see what what can do. And again, that's the same thing because the technology is becoming so cheap. You can just have a computer with you and you have a great coders and you create something extremely quickly around around the world. Uh, another one, uh, this day two. So day two, I couldn't attend uh, because I had to leave back, sadly, again, to uh, back to London. But there was, uh, have you ever heard about uh, Timo Werencela? So he, have you heard about Aaron's guy, um, Ivan? No, I haven't. So this is I haven't, crazy. I haven't. I'm, not gonna, I, I'm just going to let you guys check it, but is. He's that guy who, who crowdfunded crazy movies about, you know, this Hitler going against, like, it's these crazy movies are made by just the crowd because they're funded by the crowd. And he creates these things that really play into pop culture and completely crazy. I mean, this is what I like because it shows that it was not a tech talk, but it was, it shows how creativity can be created and how, you know, you can use a crowd to do stuff and suddenly you put an ID to life that, Hollywood would have never even greenlit. So it, it, that, that, that was fun. Uh, any was there any anything 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 else? Sorry that you that you've seen because I, don't, I know you were not spending your day in front of the computer. It's not the same as being there, Ivan. 
Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I mean, I noticed that some of the speakers that are there are people that we we know that are good friends of us, like, like Marvin, Marvin Liao uh, uh, yeah, from yeah. 500, <laughs> 500 startups. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I could not I could not check out his videos, but all the videos are available online. So if Correct. you want um, to check them out, we highly highly recommend you to check them out for sure. I was just thinking about looking back at my experience because I was a speaker there last year. Uh, uh, I see that um, I really like the fact that what these guys are doing is they are pushing the envelope. Meaning they are not playing it safe, just bringing the same speakers back to back right. to back to back, as as we see very often in many other many other conferences, uh, and, and 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 we even have a, a situation like this that you know I was saying okay Ramon is going, Paul is going, hey guys I want to go, and and and, and Vladimir the guy is like man we would love to have you but you spoke here last year and we don't repeat speakers and I'm like okay I like that mm -hmm. cool. Cool. Fair yeah, enough. I think it's I'm good. Just, I think it's actually good because I'll, I'll just stay here. We will you frag guys <laughs> have fun over there. <laughs> That's a new challenge. No, but I think I think it's fair. I'm not gonna be reinvited next year, and I think it's great because it creates I mean I understand that some conferences do that because it creates that, that feel of community. Uh, the, the flip side of the coin, it can, it can create that, that sense of just a brotherhood because more often than not, sadly, still speakers are male, although there were a lot of, of female speakers, and I commend them for that, but spark that to me. But you, you don't want to create that and create, create a cast of speakers that just go, go along uh, together at conferences. I think they're doing a, 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 nice, a nice choice. If I ever want to go back, basically, I just attend, uh, I just attend a conference. I know we're almost running out of time. I just really quickly want to say, that you should uh, you should also check the talk of uh, Dave uh, Briss. So he is a guy who lives also in the United Kingdom. He has a show on on television and on YouTube called the day before tomorrow it's about innovation it's pretty well done he also has an agency that has i think offices in new york and and and, um, and singapore he, he talks about creativity and in a very simple way it means like very active activable way so i think you should check you should absolutely check it out and last but not least i haven't seen it yet but everybody tells me it was one of the best speech uh, of, of the conference the last one gbm uh Kazarjan, he's a he talked about the challenge, the, the challenge of, 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 of innovation. He's a professor. You should absolutely check it out. I've seen some of his work before. I've not seen that one in particular. I mean, that's sorry, that speech in particular, but you should absolutely check it out. Uh, I will put again all the links. Um, and uh, I'd like personally to thank uh, everybody at Spark.me because I had a fascinating time, a great, great time. I love your country and your people. So I'll be back. Yeah, absolutely. Same, same for me. I was there last year. Looking forward to the next time that we're gonna get opportunity to go there. Uh, the only thing that I'm really disappointed, Paul, and I gotta tell you, is that you did not get kicked out of a Casino Royale, <laughs> which I can say I managed to do that. Yeah, last year, just a brief, a brief uh, anecdote. Uh, last year was some of the speakers we were there. It was David Armano, uh, uh, Gloria, David, Heather. Some of us we were yeah, we went to the Casino Royale. Which by the way, by the way, in that hotel, there is the Casino Royale. Yes, have you heard it about a small little story called James Bond? Yeah, James but there Bond. is a Casino I had, Royale. I had, gold, I had golden yeah. shoes on stage just for that with a little England flag. Sorry, go, go, go ahead. Ah, yeah, well, we went to the casino and we had a good time, but uh, we were not, uh, let's say, spending too much money there because over there, if you go there, you are expected to put a lot of money in the, into, the, into the tables. And, uh, well, we took it easy. We were just, you know, uh, checking checking the casino out and they very kindly ask us to 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 leave the premises <laughs> so Actually, so i can say that uh, i've been kicked out of casino royale and you haven't huh, uh, well the th the reality <laughs> the reality is the stories that happen in montenegro say montenegro so i'm not going to share my stories this is <laughs> i'm not as oh. as in, ah. Guys, thank you so much. Awesome. And Ivan, I'll, I'll see you soon, uh, probably next week. We're not sure. I mean, again, uh, we're very sorry. Our schedule are a little bit, lots of travels. We know that Ivan and myself will meet in Poland for Bitspiration, the Bitspiration conference uh, around June 21st. Uh, there will be an episode before that. That's a, one thing we can promise you. And on that, Ivan, let's see you next Yeah, and week. Hopefully, we're, hopefully we're going to be able to record from yeah, Bitspiration. Even, yeah, that would be a good Bye, Ivan. See you. See you guys. Take care, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.